Convolutional networks are a fruitful model. Lots of innovation and lots of successes, and as I mentioned before, they're very computationally intense, uh, intensive. They are intensive, but they're efficient because uh, they simultaneously can use the parallel pipelines of GPUs, so they are um, highly, highly parallelizable and um, that's why it can be trained faster uh, like there are fewer bottlenecks than say in the um, recurrent neural network which we will talk about later so fully convolutional neural networks what that is when we have it cnn isn't it already fully convolutional or it's it's partially convolutional or it's uh uh, semi-convolutional. What what is happening there? Uh, when uh, you hear the term, I uh, by the end of this short discussion, I want you not to be surprised and just say, yeah, of course, old stuff. So the task of segment semantic segmentation. Imagine or observe on the screen that you have this task when. Um, you have an environment or a video from an environment, an image, and each pixel of your image has a label. And when this car drives around, for each pixel around it, at all time, you need to predict, well, your algorithm, your neural network, your convolutional neural network, need to predict what object it belongs to. Is it a tree? Is it a car? Is it a road? Is it a person? Is it a a bike. This task is called semantic segmentation task. In the, the image I'm showing you here, the part on the left is the ground truth. And ground truth is x and y together. This is x, our data. Y, manually labeled or obtained otherwise, gives a label for each pixel on the x on the image. So we see which pixel belong, pixels belong to a bike, which pixels belong to a border, which pixels belong to a bicyclist, and to the background. We want automatically from that image X to construct a mask like that or be able to segment live on uh, the image as you see right here. That is the semantic segmentation task. So why fully convolutional is needed? Here's our traditional model. We have a few convolution layers, maybe with pooling, maybe without, that generate channels in the intermediate steps. So layer one, layer two, and we generate channels here. The convolutions are actually happening in between. And um, it all culminates with fully connected or so called, as you know, feed-forward neural network that then makes a prediction from uh, K classes. Good. Can we do the same without fully connected layers? Yes, we can. Remember, one, one convolutions. Using one convolutions, not 13 by 13, not 3 by 3, but 1 by 1, we can replace all fully connected layers and we need to quickly recap that remember what was happening to in one convolutions if you have a few layers right here then you can apply one convolution that pierces through all of the layers and produces one um, channel at the next layer but you don't have to use just um, a one neuron 
that's a drastic reduction. You can use neurons fewer than in the layer before, but still multiple one convolution layers. And then gradually, not in one step, but in a couple of steps, you can create just one um, layer output and uh, then use it for prediction uh, uh, classification each um, say pixel on this output layer will correspond to the prediction that we want to make but for the task of semantic segmentation what do we do we need upsampling our upsampling is the up convolution that we spoke about in one of the previous lectures. So then we started with an image, age, height by uh, width, and we ended up with an image, height by width. Well, we went through a number of steps of one convolution and we added up something at the end. So we created uh, an image output of the same size, but it's similar to the classification task, only now we're classifying one pixel at a time. An interesting point to note is that for each image, if it's H by W and it's say eight megapixels or whatever um, the resolution is, we have for eight megapixels, we have eight million labels. So now, instead of um, one uh, d-dimensional feature space as an input and only one single label, we have many more labels and many more gradient signals at a, signal, a single sample, single example. So the training can be much more efficient. We may not need millions and millions of examples in order to train the network. That's a remarkable achievement. And um, this is a fully convolutional network. Let's call it vanilla fully convolutional. That's how the full network looks. We have ground truth segmentation. We produce segment pixel wide prediction, uh, back propagate to the input, and perform gradient descent. Introduced in 2014. Takeaway is when target and input have the same dimension, it may be better to use convolution everywhere. 